It's being brought to you by the Piccadilly Inn, your best pick for South Jersey's best wings, Route 206 in Shemong. Sky Guasco is back for another edition of the Fantasy Fix with us right here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. What do you know, Sky? What's up, man? Hey, Mike. Great to be back, man. Another week. Let's do it. All right. Well, uh, a lot of uh, stuff going on. we got the Eagles tonight, so uh, a lot of Eagle fans out in the audience want to know Eagles, Bucks, uh, the plays uh, that you like tonight. Do you like uh, any Eagles offensively uh, in the game? Let's start with them. I do, and it might be a tough uh, tough sledding for the Eagles for NFL terms, but I'll let that play out. For fantasy, Jalen Hurts, you got to continue to play him at quarterback, 21-plus fantasy points in every game he's played in his career so far. He gets it done on the ground. You love that. Kenny Gainwell. Might be a better fantasy play tonight than Miles Sanders. Nobody runs on the Buccaneers. They might have to flare it out to gain well out of the backfield. I like him. Devontae Smith, you got to continue to play him. And then Zach Ertz getting the start for Dallas Goddard. So I like those Eagles tonight. All right. On the flip side, you got Bucks here. A lot of Bucks, Bucks, Bucks. Uh, the Eagles defense gave up 40 to Kansas City, 40 to Dallas. I would imagine that you want a lot of Bucks in your offense tonight. You're playing everybody from the Buccaneers. All receivers, whoever plays a tight end, you can stream them if you need them. Obviously, Brady's the top option this week. And Leonard Fournette is the running back, the only running back I want out of the backfield. But A.B., Evans, and Godwin, they're all surefire starts. All right, we'll get listener questions in just a minute here. 609-403-0973-609-403-0973. Use the free mobile app. And message us through the app, and we will answer your questions in just a second. Let's hit on a couple storylines. You mentioned Miles Sanders. You like Gainwell better. A lot of people want to know, is it time to just cut bait with Miles Sanders? Yeah, I think it is. And and unfortunately, I'm not really a a victory lap type guy, but uh, I've been fading Miles Sanders all season long. Uh, The backfield's been messy. They don't use a workhorse. We like that in fantasy football. And even though he was a lower round draft pick, I like Kenny Gainwell coming out of college, the best pass catching running back in the class. So Gainwell is the guy I've had on all my rosters. You can't cut Miles Sanders because he is a running back. But if you can trade him for really anything at this point to upgrade or package him, I absolutely would. All right. uh, Let me uh, get your take on what's your take with the Kansas City running back situation now? Well, CEH is out on IR, so he's going to miss at least the next couple of games. Daryl Williams is going to be the guy. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, I watched somewhat closely when he played in preseason for the 49ers a few years ago. Never actually played in regular season game with his injuries. Uh, But he's just unfortunately passed his opportunity. Uh, Daryl Williams is going to be that guy. And look, if he's the one getting 15-plus touches in that potent offense, he's the one you want. Might still be available on waiver wires if he wasn't picked up on a waiver day, so go take a look. But Daryl Williams is the guy in Kansas City. I feel like this keeps coming up, but uh, what are the what's the advice for the Dalvin Cook owners? Well, well, frustrating. Obviously, if he plays, you play him. But I said that two weeks ago. He played, and he was at about 60%, and he put out a dud for you. But these top-end running backs in fantasy football, you have to take the, the look on. Honestly, the only advice I have for Dalvin Cook managers is going to be go get Alexander Madison. You may have to overpay for him at this point because he's been dominant, but you have to have him on your roster. The Vikings starting running back has had 25 plus fantasy points every game this season. Yeah. And uh, obviously, uh, you, you know, you don't want to get into a situation where they start to split time either. Right. I mean, right. is that something as Madison keeps playing? Well, are you fra- afraid that there might be a split coming? Yeah. Uh, yes. Not as much as in Dallas that we saw early in the season, right? Zeke was the guy, but Tony Pollard had a lot of work, but we've seen over the last couple of weeks. It's still the Zeke show with Tony Pollard getting a couple snaps. It's still Dalvin cook when he's healthy, but Alexander Madison's absolutely impressed. Also the Vikings are on by next week. So you may be without, well, you will be without Dalvin cook and Madison next week too. So go find a patch for that ahead of the curve here. But if Dalvin plays, you play him. If you don't have Madison, go pay for him, and you may have to overpay at this point, but I think it's worth it. Okay, are you putting McCaffrey right into the lineup, or do you want to wait a week? Yes. No, you have to. And, and again, Christian McCaffrey, I would rather – Christian McCaffrey is the only running back that I would rather put up 10 points in my starting lineup and let me down than have him go off for 30 on my bench. Dalvin Cook, if he's not 100%, I'd almost rather bench him and then have him go off and know that he's healthy. CMC goes out there and he plays, you have to play him. Okay, let's get the listener questions in. They've got a bunch of them again this week from Sky Guasco from the Candlestick Kids Fantasy Football Podcast of the Believe Podcast Network. Tough one here. Let's start off Dak Prescott or Jalen Hurts. 
Oh, that's a great one. Dak Prescott going up against New England. That is trouble in New England. And Jalen Hurts tonight versus Tampa Bay. I'm actually going to lean Jalen Hurts again, 21 plus fantasy points. And uh, the Buccaneers have been susceptible via the pass because nobody can run on them. But a rushing quarterback might be able to. And Zeke, I think, will be able to run on New England. I am going to go with uh, Jalen Hurts here. Okay, Andrew from Delaware for Sky Fantasy. Should I start Jalen Rigger or Kadarius Tony? That one sounds easy, right? Yeah, right. Kadarius Tony, great debut last week. Uh, I think he just needs to keep his hands to himself, quite literally. Uh, but if he does that, he'll be fine. And unfortunately for Giants fans, Saquon, Daniel Jones, Kenny Galladay, all doubtful. Um, Jalen Rigger, I think, is fun, but we haven't seen the big boom yet. Uh, I don't know about Mike Glennon, but I'm going to ride Kadarius Tony right now. All right, this guy says, uh, my Daniel Jones is injured. Do I go Sam Darnold, or do I pick up a guy like Carson Wentz? Well, that's actually in the same game here. So, Sammy D going up against the Vikings, and obviously Wentz on the other side here. Um, you know, I think I would ride Sam Darnold. I know he struggled a little bit the last couple of weeks, but if Christian McCaffrey is back, I like Sam Darnold. If Christian McCaffrey sits and he's out, then I would go with uh, Carson Wentz. Or, I'm sorry, um, yeah, uh, Wentz. Kirk Cousins. I apologize. A PPR, tight end, Ertz, Higgins, or Schultz? Ertz, Higgins, I think it means Higby, uh, or Schultz. you got to ride Schultz here. Dalton Schultz has been absolutely on fire. Bill Belichick is going to try to shut down the best option for the Cowboys. The problem for Bill is that there's about five best options. So I'm going to ride Dalton Schultz here. He's got three touchdowns in the last two games. He's obviously the number one there. It's not Blake Jarwin. They've separated in snap share. I'm going to go Dalton Schultz there. Now, this one, this guy's been listening to the segment here because he knows you like to have context on his roster. Nice. So he says, Thank PPR, you. would you trade away Boy Davis and Jamal Williams to get Zach Moss and T. Higgins? He has Kamara Mitchell on a bye, Gibson, and then he has Woods, Ridley, Chenault, and Sutton as his other wide receivers. So Boyd, Davis, and Jamal Williams to get Zach Moss and T. Higgins. Okay, does it say which da- uh, which Davis there? Uh, does, Mike Davis or Corey that's Davis? That's a good by question. Chance? I does not. Just gives me Davis. Come on, man. You did such a good job with all the stuff in there, and then you didn't <laughs> give me the Davis. Let's it's go right, Mike, Mike Davis. Give me, give, me, give me those five names one more time. Boyd. Right, let's, let's go Boyd, Davis, and Jamal Williams to get mm-hmm. Zach Moss and T. Higgins. Yeah, I would do it. So Higgins is the number one-ish. It's Jamar Chase quickly, but he's number two at least. Boyd, when the three of them play, Boyd is the distant third. So I would be okay to move off of him. Jamal Williams is my guy, but it's definitely DeAndre Swift. Regardless of which Davis it is, Mike Davis or Corey Davis, I'd be able to move off. Love T. Higgins, and you need some help at running back. It looks like Zach Moss is the number one guy there. So I would do the three for two in that scenario. I want Higgins and Moss. Now, interestingly enough, somebody different says, should I start Ertz or Higby? No Schultz. This one's just between Ertz and Higby. Ertz and Higby, man, I guess you can ride with uh, with Ertz here. He's They've been 50-50 when Ertz has been healthy. Now Dallas Goddard is going to be out. We know, obviously, the long track record with the Eagles and Ertz. So I would be okay going with Ertz here over Higby only because there's so many mouths to feed. Uh, with the Rams, so I guess I would go Ertz here, but it's close. I have him uh, pretty much back-to-back in my rankings this week. All right, uh, here's a question for you, Sky. Uh, are you still ranking Tyler Lockett as a top receiver now with Geno Smith? I'm not. Um, Tyler Lockett is fading quickly. He was actually a, a player on my show that I would mentioned earlier this week in, uh, looking to trade away, to be honest with you. I am concerned. He's going up against Pittsburgh this week. Flying across the country for West Coast teams is not as easy as East Coast to West Coast because of the earlier time difference there. Russell Wilson out. It was DK Metcalf down the stretch. He's the one that caught the passes and was targeted. So I'm looking to fade Tyler Lockett this week. Now, if Tyler Lockett blows up on your bench, I'll wear that, and you can play him moving forward. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I would move away if you can. All right. uh, Here's a question for you. Need a quarterback here, Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert? It's a good problem to have right there. Yeah, yeah, that that's phenomenal. And assuming you're in a single quarterback league because you're asking me for two guys, it's Justin Herbert, absolutely on fire, even up against Baltimore. Carson Wentz, ladies and gentlemen, had five, uh, 400 yards and two touchdowns last week. Justin Herbert, 398 and four touchdowns last week against Cleveland. This one's in Baltimore, again, West Coast to East Coast. I don't love that, but you got to ride Justin Herbert right now. The Chargers are on fire. All right, uh, running back PPR Jamal Williams 
or going with uh, Madison? Well, this one's really easy. If Cook is out, you go Madison. If Cook plays, you sit Madison and go Jamal Williams. So it really just depends on what the Vikings are going to do. Yeah, uh, okay, and more some wide receivers, PPR for you here. Mike Williams, man, he had a monster week last week. Yep. Mike Williams or Devonta Smith? Uh, Mike Williams against Baltimore. Again, Michael Pittman had a great game, and Michael Pittman's not Mike Williams, and Carson Wentz is not Justin Herbert. I think they're going to be just fine here with the Chargers there. So I'm going to ride Mike Williams. He had one dud game this entire season. Uh, it was two weeks ago against the Raiders. He only had one catch. Other than that, he has seven receptions in every game. Double-digit targets, 16 targets last week, Mike. Two touchdowns, 165. you got to ride Mike Williams. All right. Uh, by the way, the gentleman did chime back in. Corey Davis was the uh, Davis. Davis that he was going with. Uh, another quick one, Hawkinson or Ertz at tight end? This one's tough, and it's not a popular opinion. I hope I'm wrong on this, but I'm going to go with Zach Ertz. Hawkinson has been shut out for the last three weeks in fantasy after dominating the first two weeks. He has an underlying knee injury that nobody's talking about. And obviously that's affecting his performance and teams now understand if they shut down Hawkinson, there isn't much of a pass game outside of him other than rookies and journeymen there for the Lions. So I'm going to go Ertz here because I think Hawkinson's a little more injured uh, than we care to admit here, unfortunately, but hopefully I'm wrong and he blows up, but I'm going to go Ertz one more week. All right. Last minute here. This floor is yours. Sky Guasco, 10 o'clock Sunday morning on YouTube. The fantasy focus starts sit, check him out there. But right now give us your favorite plays. Start sits and uh, waiver wires you got it okay i'm going to give everybody a couple of deeper sleepers again i've got plenty of names you can reach out to me on twitter at sky guasco s-k-y-g-u-a-s-c-o for more start sits and i can give you the higher price names but i'm going to give you some sleepers carson Wentz versus houston again 400 yards versus the ravens the ravens obviously are better than houston i'll take that i'm going to go with daryl williams we mentioned him earlier for the chiefs stepping in for ceh 56 point over under highest of the week highest of the season against the washington football team chase claypool my wide receiver play this week against seattle 130 and one last week no juju schuster out for the season most likely i like chase claypool against the seahawks my tight end is ricky seals jones he's a starter for logan thomas was peppered last week he will be moving forward and the chiefs are susceptible over middle there also he's got a red zone and i just mentioned that high over under at 56 points and then my DST is going to be the Colts again versus Houston. The Colts got beat by the Ravens late, but they were shutting out and dominating the Ravens in that first half. I think they'll be able to do it against Houston and my, uh, and uh, Davis Mills. There you go. Sky Guasco, the uh, fantasy focus start sit show is on YouTube at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. You can check out the Candlestick Kids podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. There you go for week number six. Sky Guasco, my friends. Take care, bud. You too. Take care. All right. Uh, the Fantasy Focus Fix is brought to you by the Piccadilly Inn, your best pick for South Jersey's best wings, Route 206 in Shamong, New Jersey. Hope your fantasy teams are doing well. Hopefully, Sky's helping you out. We appreciate him each and every week right here on the Sports Match.